everyone, Rose Red Homestead. Uh, welcome to this unscheduled kind of a surprise video. Normally we do not release a video on Fridays, but this is a special case because we've had a couple of things happen that we just want to update you on. First of all, early this morning, and I mean early this morning, I got a text from the uh, customer service representative from VKP that from whom we purchased our harvest canner. She was so nice and just apologized for uh, being out of the office on Friday when I was trying to get in touch with her. This is actually Monday morning that we're videoing this and so she got back to me early this morning and I pre really appreciate it. In fact, she um, knows of us and is a fan of our YouTube channel and part of our community so that was nice. Um, she eased my mind over what is going on with this um, as I called this little doodah, this temperature um, gauge. And the way that she explained it was that um, here's the red needle, and once it starts boiling, if the needle moves and goes up to a place where it stops, whether or not it is in the green zone, and then you leave it there for 10 minutes, and then you start your timing, and then once the timing is over and the heat is off, if the needle falls back down, this is operational. They're having some difficulty with it getting all the way up into the green, and it doesn't match what is in the instruction book. And so I was concerned because it wasn't getting up into the green, and yet I knew that it was okay because um, you saw me on Wednesday with the pineapple chili salsa take the temperature measurements and I was up as high as I could go. So she said is if the water is boiling, if steam is being generated and the needle is moving, it's okay. And then what you do is you pay attention to where on this dial the, the um, needle stops. And if you want to do that, that's just fine. But you can also just simply eyeball it. Once steam is, is being produced and coming out from under the lid, once it vents for 10 minutes, just like in pressure canning, only this is not pressure canning. What needs to happen is the pot needs to fill with steam. And so you give it 10 minutes to fill with steam, then you can turn the heat down, and as long as the water continues to boil, then you go ahead and time it for anything under 45 minutes. So that solved that. This canner is now back up in our Amazon store. In fact, most of you would never even have noticed that it was gone. I did take it down, but it was down for only about 36 hours, and then I have put it back up because I, this canner will work for me, and I think it will work for you as well. And I looked at everything else on the market in terms of steam canners that are a pot like this rather than the, the, the small little base pan with the top hat over it. This one, from my perspective, is the best. So, onward to our adventures in steam canning. Now for a little follow-up on the video that we did on how to use your home canned white potatoes. Oh my goodness, what a phenomenal response we got to that video. We absolutely loved it. And um, in fact, we have over 400 comments on that video and going strong, we're getting more and more every single day. But I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Um, oh, first of all, someone gave me a great compliment. They said, oh Pam, you're such a mad scientist. And I thought, yes, all right, that's exactly what I'm wanting to be, is a mad scientist. So, and then she put LOL, I knew that she was teasing me and that was just great. Um, there were two issues that I saw in the comments that I wanted to comment on. First of all, I was overwhelmed with a number of you that said, we love lumps in our potato, in our mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay then, that's just great. And then um, there was one issue which is a little bit dangerous. Uh, two people that I know of and maybe more suggested the way to get around that is to just not put liquid in the jars. Do what is called dry canning of potatoes where you just put the potatoes in the jar, put them in the can or run them for the appropriate number of minutes and then it doesn't have any liquid in it. Please, please do not do that. Um, what happens with that is because there is no liquid, the heat transfer is um, thwarted. 
because the liquid is needed in the jars for convection. And it is convection that carries the um, heat into the middlemost part. Now, everybody said, well, it works fine for us, it works fine for us. That is not an endorsement as far as I'm concerned. The USDA has said that this is an unsafe practice and knowing the science behind this, I agree with them and I would never recommend that. But there are some other solutions to that problem. There were so many wonderful comments. It will be worth your time if you have not spent any time reading the comments under that video to go back to the video and see what people are sharing. I learned so much about other things that I can do with our canned potatoes, and I think everyone will, but I want to share just a few things with you from, from people. This was from High Flyer 13131. I think you should make this a new series. Videos on what to make with all shelf-stable foods would be a hit. Everyone makes videos on canning things, but not many shows, but not many show different recipes for using the canned goods. And that got 102 likes, plus comment after comment after comment underneath that one. And then two or three times below, other people reiterated that that's what they would love to see. So we're going to be doing a new series on this. And so I think maybe our next one will be how to use canned hamburger. Then um, Richard Mays, 5429, said... With my canned potatoes, I have found when the mashed potatoes are a bit too wet, I just add some instant potato flakes to bring it back to consistency that I like. It works beautifully. What a great idea that is. Then um, Peter H. 5485 says, I canned some potato recently and tried them mashed with heavy cream and butter. Fantastic. When I opened the jar, I dumped them into a colander and rinsed them well then into a pot with a little fresh water to thoroughly heat up. A second drain, mash, season, eat, delicious. So there are some ideas for us. And then uh, Donna Lockley, 8815 says, I love canned potatoes. Wonderful idea on recipes, Pam and Jim. Potato variety will make a difference on starch in the jar. I'm still experimenting on which I like best. Early red potatoes are number one so far in having the least amount of starch, she's saying. Others have mentioned on Facebook that soaking them will help remove the starch prior to canning. By the way, I've been freeze drying the potato starch solids for other things like thickening and using in auger recipes for mushroom growing. Another thing is when canning taters, there is sometimes a chemical reaction that turns the white side of the canning lid black. Not often, but it does happen. It won't harm you. Good information in that one. Holly Cook 2048 says, I believe that canned potatoes would also be great, a great use for bread. Now I've made potato bread before, but I've always used the instant flakes. I think that's a great idea. Walter Joshua Pan, Joshua Pan Backer 1571. Well, I stumbled on that name, sorry about that. I have found it helpful to add a little bit of citric acid and a tiny bit of ascorbic acid, vitamin C to the water when canning potatoes. Both the consistency and the color stay a lot better. That's a good idea, and a lot of people ask, well, how much do you use? There was a good conversation underneath that comment. Renee Sutton said, I used a jar, and to get them out of the jar, I ran fresh water in and used thin rubber spatula in the jar to gently break up and dump in a strainer to thoroughly rinse potatoes, then put on a cookie sheet and pat it as dry as I could then drizzled with oil and spices and oven roasted until crispy. Turned out wonderful. That does sound good, doesn't it? Um, Motox1 says, My first batch of canned potatoes came out just like yours. I used them up in soups. Thereafter, I changed it up a bit. A lot more time involved, but the end result is so much better. I peel and cut the potatoes in chunks, rounds, or french fries, and soak them for a couple of hours in water. I change the water about three times, then refrigerate them in water overnight. The next day I drain and rinse, boil for three minutes, and, you, and then can with fresh water. They've been sitting on the shelf for two years, and the water is clear with hardly any starch or mushy potatoes. Yay! 
There aren't much left now, so I hope the ones I just planted do well this year. I hope so too, Mo. That's wonderful um, information. Mary Catherine, 9237, says, I like to take the potatoes and roughly mash. Add mixed veggies, some mayo, tuna, or salmon, and form into patties. You can fry, bake, or air fry until crispy on the outside. So there you go. Those are just some of the ideas that I picked out just scanning through them. And um, so I just wanted to let you know that there is a wealth of information underneath that video. So if you want more ideas about how to work with your own potatoes that you have canned, check out the, the conversations underneath that video. And then going forward, we will start doing a series on how to use canned foods. And I'm very hopeful that it will generate this, this same kind of excitement and commenting so that this is what our community is really all about. It is all of us helping each other to do a better job. And I just love that. Jim and I, we talk about it all the time, how great our community is and how wonderful our people are. And it just, you spur us onward. You know, we're getting older, but seeing how you respond to the things that we present, not just respond to us, but respond to each other, that is one of the big things that keeps us going. So thank you so much, and we will see you for our next video tomorrow.